Those were the words of Hercule Poirot, Agatha Christie's fiction detective. And I say, if there was a hack, then there was a hacker. Checkpoint products excel in finding the hack, in preventing its success. Checkpoint research aims at finding the hacker, giving further context to the attacks found by our products. Our day-to-day -day may not be as exciting as interviewing possible culprits on a running train, nor is it as mysterious as sitting around a dinner table where every one of the 10 guests is accused of murder. But the same methods apply, and our analysts need to collect evidence, disregard smoke screens, be patient and attentive before they reveal the truth. And I want to suggest that the same mindset is also crucial for you and for your security teams. And I will do so by telling you two stories first found by Checkpoint Research, CPR, starting with Cyber on the Orient Express. Enjoy the ride. Our story begins when one of our analysts found, found emails sent to, and only to, government agencies in a certain country in Southeast Asia. These emails were found to be malicious by Sandblast Threat Emulation, our zero-day file analysis product. It was peculiar, though, because these emails were sent from other government agencies in the very same country. Hmm. Well, we opened some of these emails uh, and learned that the documents were, were what seemed to be legitimate summaries of G20 conversations. We also checked them on VirusTotal and learned that for some of them, all other security vendors said they were benign. So here's a mystery for you. Is this country really being attacked? Sandblast says yes. All other evidence say no. To settle this conflict, we started manually analyzing these files and learned that, as Sandblast suggested, opening them starts a long chain of events that leads to an infection with a remote access trojan called Ghost. And here's how it works. When opening the attachments, they run a macro. The macro runs a short, a short script that's hidden under the company name in the document's metadata. This script would then drop a VB script, schedule a task to run it every two minutes. That script would then download the second stage malware, which will communicate with the CNC server, send information about the infected host, and if and when decided, will infect them with the final stage malware, Ghost. Or at least, this is what the attack looked like in December 18. But since then, we saw more and more emails sent to the same government agencies with similar senders and subjects, but different infection chains. The threat actors were getting more and more evolved and replaced the macros with exploits, uh, tried to masquerade as Google Chrome updates or even as different antivirus engines. All in all, in the course of six months, we were able to identify eight different clusters of this attack. So at this point, we're pretty sure that this is a targeted attack against this country. But who's behind it? Well, one clue we had was the times the malicious emails were sent. It was very blunt that no malicious emails at all were sent during February. Why is that? because the Chinese New Year is time better spent with the family than in conducting cyber attacks. But just to be sure, we also double-checked what the traditions of the Chinese New Year are. Well, it includes fireworks, decorating, cleaning, but no, cyber attacks are nowhere on this list, so we have something. On a similar note, threat actors are also human beings working 9 to 5-ish. So we checked for the uptime of the CNC server and learned that the threat actors were operating in the 9 to 5 of UTC plus 8. But these two evidence, February break, UTC plus 8, are circumstantial. And in any case, they can refer to many different countries around Asia. So we still had to dig deeper. Another thing we found was uh, that in some of the documents, the metadata was in Chinese characters. Also, some of the clusters starting, started with an RTF attachment that was created with an exploit building kit commonly used by Chinese threat actors. And last but not least, 
The malware was communicating with the CNC server, and the domain was resolved to an IP historically related to another domain used by Rancor, which is a probably Chinese threat group operating against different countries around Southeast Asia. Well, looks like all of our evidence pointed the same direction. Adding the clues already collected, plus the fact that ghost malware is also commonly used by Chinese threat actors, and the attribution of this campaign becomes pretty clear. To summarize this little tale, Sandbus Threat Emulation was able to prevent a targeted attack against a country in Southeast Asia. Despite some misleading clues, our analysts were able to prove that this attack is real and is probably of Chinese uh, origins. We reported our findings to our customer, the targeted country, and with this, our work here was done. But with every investigation that comes to an end, another one begins. Eye on the Nile. It was early in 2019 that Amnesty International released a report about uh, phishing campaigns against human rights activists in Egypt. It was around springtime that our analysts found an allegedly unrelated phishing campaign uh, targeting Outlook and Facebook. But a short analysis showed that these campaigns are actually connected using similar uh, attack infrastructure. The threat actors in both campaigns were after email credentials with both phishing pages and malicious mail add-ons. But while in the original attack, the threat actors only sought access to email, now they are also looking for their victims' documents that are saved on Google Drive. But this was not all, and we'll get back to it in a few minutes. During our research, we learned that one of the malicious domains had an open directory. Now, what it means is that we now have access to the behind the scenes of this attack. Now, try to imagine this. Close your eyes, if you will. You're now a threat intelligence analyst. You're going over this open directory, over the perpetrator's secrets. You find some of their attack tools. You're happy. You find their SQL databases. And now you're really getting excited. And then you come across this script, and you're horrified. Why is that? Let's go over it together. If the amount of queries down, done on the server, the one you're currently querying, exceeds 30, then send an email. The email will be sent from checknow.com to a certain devdlogana at gmail.com with this message. You exceeded your quota. Would you come and have a look? In other words, the threat actors are proactively looking for threat, for threat intelligence analysts like us going over their infrastructure. And they might soon come and look for traces, our traces. So we immediately uh, deleted our footsteps and fingerprints and went back offline to analyze the data already retrieved from the server. The most interesting thing we found was a target list a list of all the emails targeted in this attack. How many emails? 33. Why only 33? Most threat actors are after the big numbers, trying to maximize on their chances to get money out of the attack. If the number is so small, it means the threat actors here are after some very specific people or data. Who were they after? All 33 people were human rights activists, lawyers, academics, all known for uh, opposing the Egyptian regime. So by now, we understand that this is a targeted attack. We know who the targets are, but who's behind it? Who are the threat actors? Well, we started thinking, is there any rock we left unturned? Any link we left unclicked? And that's exactly what we found, a link. As the malicious mail add-ons were hosted on re real Google uh, pages, they had to include a link to the developer information. And the developer info included an email that we're already familiar with, devdlogana at gmail.com, but this email didn't lead us anywhere. But it also included a domain, drivebackup.co. Now, this actually sounds like a, like a fairly legitimate short domain, but we still wanted to know 
uh, if it relates to anything that we're familiar with. So we checked our databases and learned that this domain is being communicated with by, uh, by a mobile app called iLoud 200%. Now, this mobile app, app cla uh, claims to double the, uh, the volume of the ringtone of the device. Now, I know that you're all excited about this feature and already want to install this, uh, this incredible app, but I'll have to disappoint you and tell you that we uh, installed it on, a, on an Android device and learned that uh, the ringtone was left, in, left intact. So, sorry to disappoint. But we still wanted to know what this app actually does. So, we scanned it with Sandblast Mobile and learned that the only thing the app does is to collect the location of the device and send it to a remote server. Remember I told you the threat actors are not only after emails and documents? Well, this is where it's getting real. Now they also have their target's physical location at any point in time. But our research question still remains, who are the threat actors? Who's behind this attack? Well, the code in the app that collects the location of the target also includes some default coordinates. Want to know where they take us? They take us to an unnamed building in Cairo, Egypt, right near a shopping mall. But we wanted to know what this building was. So at this point, we communicated or contacted uh, the New York Times and one of their investigative journalists, Ronan Bergman. We sent him all the information we had collected about this attack, and he then sent another reporter from the UK all the way to Egypt to go look for this building. Want to know what he found? He found the headquarters of the, uh, the Egyptian intelligence, Egypt's main spy agency. Well, looks like the ones spying on these human rights activists just might be the Egyptian authorities. While in Egypt, the reporter also wanted to interview some of, the, uh, some of the targets of this attack, the potential victims. So he started looking for them, but one, two, at least three of them were nowhere to be found. We then learned that they had been arrested for protesting against the Egyptian government. He did manage to find a couple of victims, though. Rajya Omran, a lawyer and human rights activist, said, I'm always worried. I never communicate anything to confidential on email. Afaf Mahfouz, an 81-year-old psychoanalyst and human rights activist, said, I thought that because of my age, they would leave me alone. But I guess I was wrong. To summarize this story, looks like what we found was a potentially domestic uh, attack spying on human rights activists. We reported all this information to the relevant entities, including, Go including Google and Microsoft, who took down the malicious apps and add-ons. And with this, the case was closed. Whether it's one country attacking another, a country attacking its own citizens, or cyber criminals attacking enterprises and individuals, checkpoint, uh, checkpoint research detectives are there to solve the crime. And you, you can and you should be the detectives of your own networks. Treat every log as a clue, every packet capture as potential evidence. I will end with another saying of Poirot, who said, the truth, however ugly in itself, is always beautiful to seekers after it. I am a great believer in, in the beauty and in the importance of the truth. Solving one, uh, one crime history just might help you prevent the next one. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.